world's weirdest restaurants takes you to New Jersey to have luscious lobster eye in the sky. It's a little goofy, you know, to have breakfast in the sky. How about if I swap you two bagels for a croissant? <laughs> Good thing he was wearing glasses. Then we're off to London for some sensational strudel that's sure to ring your bell. I knew I should have packed my later hose. We'll jet to Quebec, where French-Canadian pirates hijack Caribbean spices for a mutinous meal. Oh, shivery timbers! And end up in Japan to have supper with slithery sidekicks and furry friends. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a weird. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you the truth, I'm terrified of roller coasters. The Ferris wheels? Who doesn't love a Ferris wheel? And you throw in an excellent gourmet breakfast? I mean, what could be better? Breakfast at Maury's Piers, New Jersey, is the perfect place to rise above the ordinary and experience gourmet cuisine at new heights. This is the only oceanfront, open-air carousel serving food anywhere in the world. Where else can you go and have a breakfast in the sky? An amazing four-star meal, linens, tablecloths, it's beautiful. Have you ever been on this ride before? Yeah, I've been on here thousands of times. What is it that keeps you coming back? One of our first dates, we went out, and she found out that I'd never been on the Ferris wheel, so she took me on the Ferris wheel uh, for the first time. It's really your own private dining room in the sky, isn't That's it? That's true. Ordering a breakfast in the sky is done beforehand, and the wait staff remain grounded as you and your meal take off. Welcome to breakfast in the sky. How thank are you, you. Today? Fabulous, thank you. Looking forward to the experience. Just to confirm your order, a shrimp and lobster omelet with goat cheese. Check. And an additional Belgian waffle. Check. So this journey is kind of like going full circle, right? Full circle, yes. It'll be a 45 minute to one hour journey. 45 minutes, two cups of coffee, the rest of this juice. Going to the bathroom? No, not an option once you start the Ferris wheel. <sighs> now I'm ready. OK, straight up the ramp, bar number seven. Check this out. This is fantastic. Obviously, they've thought of everything. Once you take off, if you decide you want some sugar or hot sauce or some ketchup, <laughs> there's no way they can reach it. It's all here in your own personal little gondola. Originally, the food was very New Jersey-style boardwalk food, funnel cakes and curly fries. But the Maury's wanted to raise the bar a little bit, and it's just been very exciting. Lobster and scrambled egg omelet? That's what I'm talking about. And one Belgian waffle, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your breakfast in the sky. How do you decide at what height level it's OK to start eating? When she tells me I can go. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I can see the ocean. Oh, I'm getting a little bit dizzy. <laughs> This is one place you really don't want to lose your breakfast. Unlike sort of a typical restaurant, a typical fine dining experience where the set, if you will, is stationary, this whole thing's moving at all times. So every second, there's a different view, a different vista, something else that's happening. Hey, folks. Great. I'm great. How you doing? Great. great. You enjoying yourself so far? Yeah, it's wonderful. I tell you what, if you're interested, I'll share a bit of my waffle with you. I don't know how we're going to work I'm, that out. Yeah. Orange juice, cranberry juice, coffee, breads. Pretty generous portions, too, aren't they? Absolutely. I mean, it's a good size. A lot of potatoes, a lot of seafood in the omelet. Croissant, beautiful lemon tart, cinnamon rolls. That alone can fill you up. Are you sure you wouldn't like the strawberry? Oh, no, thanks. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't trust me. <laughs> so, Chef, will you walk me through the operation here? Yes. Uh, right here, we have a standard four-star omelet station, lobster, smoked salmon, capers, goat cheese, pepper jack cheese, farmhouse bacon cooking on a griddle. Look at this baby. Chock full of lobster, shrimp, goat cheese, nice fluffy omelet. Very generous portions of lobster in here. I thought that the lobster and shrimp would be diced up and put into the egg. It's not. There's nice, huge chunks. It's delicious. When the food's going from the kitchen to the Ferris wheel, we have to worry about seagulls. And then when the food goes up, if there's an issue with the food, we only have one shot to get it up there. I always order the same thing. <laughs> Change the cheese or something else inside of it, yeah. but it's usually lobster and shrimp. When I think amusement parks, I think about French fries, hot dogs on a stick, funnel cakes. I certainly don't think about big chunks of lobsters and fresh strawberries. Steak and eggs, I'd never had it before, but it was really amazing. It was fresh, it was delicious, cooked just right. I loved it. Uh, excuse me, do you have any great poupon? <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Jeez, oh, we're moving. Here we go. Whoa. You have to change your toss. With the crosswind. Just for the wind, did you? Oh, yeah, no kidding. Here we go. You ready? And. Oh! <laughs> oh! So close. Good thing he was wearing glasses, is all I can say. And 
how many diners will you serve in a typical morning? Anywhere from, say, 50 to 75. And the biggest challenge we have, believe it or not, is the waffle iron. Nothing says Ferris wheel like a big fluffy waffle topped with blueberries, strawberries, and drowned in Canadian maple syrup. And if we have an incident with the waffle where it sticks, we have to start over from scratch. Like, everyone goes on red alert. Maybe, maybe. Waffle bomb. Oh, it's fantastic. Crispy on the outside, fluffy on the inside. It's like a funnel cake for adults. It's a little goofy, you know, to have breakfast in the sky. You know, in most restaurants, there's only a few prime tables. But at breakfast in the sky, everybody gets the best seat in the house. We like it because it's a little romantic. We get to go on our anniversary every year. Romance with cheese. <laughs> I have not seen one who's come off the wheel that doesn't think it's the most fantastic thing they've ever done. That was 360 degrees of fine dining. We're in the business of making people laugh. We try to build things for the kid and all of us. How about if I swap you two bagels for a croissant? I'll take it. <laughs> Just pass it over. Oh, you got it. Pretty good. All right, folks, grab your accordion and your cowbell and get your yodel on, because you're about to have the most authentic Austrian experience of your life. And you're going to have it right here in London, England's High Roller Hut. <laughs> I should have packed my later hosen. People really can feel they are there, you know? They just, you walk down on those steps and you're suddenly in Austria. Weird about this place, absolutely everything. <laughs> the Tyrolean hut is a very traditional Austrian restaurant with an emphasis on live music and jolliness. And I'll give you a drink free on the house. <laughs> I you'd never ask. The menu is authentic Austrian and Hungarian food. Ah, uh, let's see. Starters, soups, very short list of vegetarian entrees. If you love meat, come here. I suppose I should have some goulash to start. Then I'd like you to recommend a couple of other dishes. Oh, and as well, I'm going to save lots of room for dessert. Oh, man, this is going to be a meal fit for a Kaiser. So if I led you in here blindfolded, would you know you were in the heart of London? No. When I first came to the door, I thought this is a very strange little restaurant. It's a lot friendlier than any other restaurant in London. How do you do? Someone said hello to me, which is not normal here. Friendly? Sure. As long as you can get past their 73-year-old bouncer. No bad. Oh, my. Ah, the goulash. You know, Austria is surrounded by several countries, including Italy, Germany, and Hungary. So this is like a classic Hungarian goulash, then Austrian style. Chunks of potato, meat, tomatoes, and it's all in a nice, very spicy beef broth. This is a real stick-to-the-bones kind of soup, perfect for a cold Austrian night. You know, you really do get the feeling that you're in the snow-filled Alps here. I mean, there's an Austrian ski hut, old wooden skis, authentic little cowbells, real wood beams, bartender and later hosen. Then a regular customer here, a real chump, or chimp as the case may be. The Tirola hut, special wine with a picture of a monkey on it. This is a pork knuckle that's been slow roasted and fried in oil. The meat is super tender, but the skin, Super crisp, served with red cabbage, roasted potatoes. Oh, that is like cutting right into a pork cracklet. And look at that meat. Any part of an animal that comes from the knee or the knuckles, that's where all the flavor is. And when it's cooked on the bone, it's even that much more intense. The richness of the meat and the crunch of the skin, it's the snap, crackle, pop of pork dishes. <laughs> this is where it all happens. This is where all the action takes place. Yeah, they decided to do an Austrian restaurant because there wasn't anything like that in London or, at all. I'm a big musician. I can play what I like. Nobody can tell me otherwise. He's an entertainer, so he will definitely engage you no matter what. Probably what brings me back is, is mainly the cowbells. Need more cowbells? Just jump on stage and join in on the action. This is like your Austrian plowman's dinner. Pork done six different ways. Sausage, pork belly, pork loin, pork roast, blood sausage, and up on top, another sausage doing a bit of a jig. It's hard to believe that all these cuts of meat come from the same animal, but they all taste delicious. Wiener schnitzel. Wiener schnitzel. There's nothing that's more typically Austrian than this. You know, you just can't go wrong when you take veal, pound it, and you bread it, and you fry it in oil. I mean, it's no wonder this is an Austrian classic. Can you yodel, sir? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> the yodel comes up, obviously from the Alps and the mountains. They used right. to communicate from one hill to the other. 
Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Have you done that before? No, I haven't. <laughs> I think I sounded more like Tarzan than a yodeler, but... <laughs> this is very exciting. I'm about to get a tutorial in Austria's most famous dessert, apple strudel, right? Like the grandmother used to make it, like, huh? Look at that. Stretched perfection here. It should be so thin that you can read a love letter through it. This is amazing. It's like an Austrian tablecloth. Sweet breadcrumbs. Lots and lots of apples in there. Now, is this yeah. one serving, chef? <laughs> no, it's about uh, 20 servings. Just a wee bit of butter here. Sultanas and a few more crumbs. Now, how are you going to roll this? It's over. And then here we go. That was a silly question. Sure, it looks great, but the proof is in the pudding. Or in this case, the strudel. It's sweet, it's tart, it's crispy. Oh, and now it even comes with some ice cream. This is apple heaven. Start with some authentic Austrian food. Add a party-like environment and some infectious music. How can you not have a great time? Uh, it's very popular because people like to come here. They can sing along and have a very good dinner and uh, go home happy. Drink a lot of big beer, like uh, oh, big steins, eat a lot of pork, eat a lot of cabbage. Brilliant, brilliant fun. The party just never ends here. <laughs>
Kids are natural. Thrust, counter thrust. Rotation of the wrist. Raise up. Not bad, but I think you better stay in the galley. Maple syrup and apple glazed pork rib. Wow, this is amazing. It's everything uh, as authentic as we can. Raw meat on the fireplace. Spicy sausage, juicy, greasy, really good. Look at that, just falling apart. The maple glaze on top. Mmm. Man, do these pirates know how to cook ribs. Mm -hmm. A life of adventure, great food. Who wouldn't want to be a pirate? I'd be coming back because the food be tasty and the beer be plentiful. We're drinking rum all the time, and we're making R all the time. Arr! We're getting paid for that? Wow, that's weird. Arr! Arr! Any last words before I walk in the plank? What's for dessert? Shark! <laughs> Rabbit owners and reptile owners don't usually mix. But fortunately, there are two cafes in Tokyo that cater, quite literally, to their unique preferences. The subtropical tea house is also known as the Reptile Cafe, and for good reason. The restaurant is home to 40 cold-blooded creatures. Leaping lizards! Or if you prefer, jumping jackrabbits. At the Usagito Cafe, their business is bunnies, and business is hopping. The Usagi To Cafe is perfect for people who love cute dishes and rabbits. In Japan, a lot of people can't have pets because their homes are too small. I wanted to provide a place where people could come and feel the animals. Look at this, they've got bunny snacks, bunny toys, bunny shampoo, and if it rains, they've even got a little bunny rain bonnet. It's very normal in Japan, but maybe for North American people, it's kind of weird. The menu is a mix of Italian, Indian, and Japanese, but there's one unifying factor, the love of the lupine. Wow, that is great. These are rabbit-shaped tongs to toss your salad with. I mean, we all jokingly refer to salads as rabbit food, so it's a fitting start to the meal here. Nice crispy greens and a beautiful miso dressing. Love this. But if you don't cotton to bunnies. It's a reptile exhibit. It's a cafe, all under one roof. And everywhere you look, there are glass cases. Lizards, snakes, frogs. And that's a boa. There wasn't a pane of glass between me and this guy. It would be lights out. I started this restaurant because I love reptiles and Chinese tea. There are many reptiles to see here, but the menu is pretty simple. Exotic teas, memorable muffins, and curious confections. It just burped. We don't have a chance to see the reptiles in the real world. We come here and we have lunch with them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a weird. <laughs> There's a savory muffin, a fruit muffin, and a dessert muffin. This is a chrysanthemum tea. This is so stunningly beautiful. <laughs> the tea seems like a flower is blossoming. It smells really nice. I like it. <laughs> Who would have thunk a vegetable muffin? Mm -hmm. This has got little pieces of cactus, bits of carrot, and an incredibly sweet dough. Surprisingly delicious. Now it's time to meet the bunnies. They've got seven species, a total of 34 in all. We've got short hair brown bunnies, black bunnies, spotted bunnies, and look at this, a jolly old white bunny here. Oh, that's Angora. I've got a sweater made out of one of your relatives. Oh, how cute is this? Look at that, a bunny-shaped pizza, complete with corn, bacon, tomato sauce, and cheese. Pairs perfectly with carrot juice. Oh, this is great. They've got like a little photo studio here for bunnies, and for a fee, you can dress your bunny up and then have it shot in all sorts of different environments. That gives me an idea for a calendar. Hey, what's up, Doc? What a fun presentation. This is classic Japanese curry. That's one spicy bunny wabbit. But if you tend to root for the tortoise over the hare, then the subtropical tea house is the spot for you. Last time I saw a turtle in a restaurant, it was in a bowl of soup. Classic Japanese style dessert here. Various types of fruit and a coconut gelatin, and a sweet liquid. You know, I expected to see an exhibit today. I didn't expect to be part of it. Mango pudding. I like a dessert that's got a little jiggle to it. And this is like the most perfect, fragrant, ripe mango whipped into a custard and chilled down. Put a cherry on top, it just doesn't get any better. I agree with you, dude. These days, it's just getting harder and harder to keep your head above water. People should come here if they want to see the, all the reptiles. Whether you come for the reptiles and stay for the desserts, or come for the desserts and stay for the reptiles, you can't help but have a good time here at the Subtropical Tea House.
not to split hairs, but the folks at the Usagito Cafe also know how to have a good time, whether it's your birthday or your bunnies. What did Maru wish for? Do 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 Hi, bunny. Hi, bunny. The cafe's version of cheese. But if you don't have a bouncing birthday bunny, there are a couple of other desserts that are available. Ah, look at this dessert. It's all about the color and the cuteness factor. This is fantastic. And this little bunny, it's just begging to be eaten. Usually, it takes 30 minutes to get in, so it's a very popular place. Quite a curious little dessert. Got a little bunny on a bunny hill in some kind of bunny fortress. All that toast was slathered with honey. It's a honey bunny. I come back here because I am so cute. Rabbit <laughs> <laughs> is cute. Rabbit is cute. Oh, and by the way, no bunnies were harmed in the making of this segment. <laughs>